All right, welcome everybody. Welcome back to the Data Science Workshop Series brought to you by the Cloud Visualization Lab. My name is Didier Barradas and I am going to give you an overview of what is Shell. So let's start, shall we? First of all, what is Shell? Shell is a common, Shell is a common language interpreter. That means that is a layer between you and the computer operating system. That means that is the way you communicate with all the bits and bytes that you don't have to actually uh, program. So that also lets you use a lot of different and powerful commands to do different tasks. It was created, it was created in the 70s and redesigned over the years by Brian Fox after uh, a very popular version by another scientist of uh, last name Byrne. So it was resigned as bash, born again shell. So people use the term shell and bash interchangeably and it's the same. If somebody tells you that he's doing a shell script or a bash script, it's basically the same. Okay, but why should you learn shell? First of all, you will look cool. You will look like a hacker to your friends. It's very powerful and very quick. It will let you do a lot of tasks automatically. And most importantly is that most of them, most, the most powerful computers in the world use Linux. For example, supercomputers around the world use Linux. Even uh, Amazon cloud services use Linux. So if you want to do something useful on them, you should know Shell. In this course, we're going to teach, we're going to use the teaching material from the Carpentries. The Carpentries are a nonprofit organization that also give you the core skills for different topics like data science. And they have different tracks like data carpentry, library carpentry, and software carpentry. Okay. So the Carpentries curriculum is in five parts. We will try to cover them all starting by navigating files and directories, and then all the way to loops, probably. Okay, so first of all, please start your terminals. For Windows users, we have different options that I compile from different sources. The first option that you can use is MOBA Xterm. This is very easy to download. You just double click it and it should work right out of the box. Then if you follow the instructions of the setup that I sent, you also have installed Git for your Windows and that provides also a terminal. If you didn't do these two things, you can go to this website, github.com, chaos slash bslab slash kbl binder serve. You will find them there, a repository that has a binder button where you can click and it will start a Jupyter Notebook with a terminal. If that is not enough or is too complicated, don't worry. We have here sandbox.cs50.io that it will also allow you to deploy a terminal in your web browser. If for some reason all of this fails, there is one last option that is to install a Linux native kernel inside Windows, especially to those that have PowerShell, this works for Windows 10 and Windows 11. For Mac users and Linux users, you just have to search for it in your system. You go to apps, you just say, you just type terminal and it should come out. Okay, so hopefully you have everything up and run. I will wait for you a couple of seconds. Okay, everything up and running. Now, I want you to honor a very ancient tradition in the computer science world that is printing hello world. First of all, in your terminal, please type echo quotes, hello world. Now you should see in your screen that it appears the word hello world. Now I want you to do the following. Echo, double quotations. Echo, hello world. Then 
more than sign hello.sh. Go ahead, type it in your terminal. And now you should see nothing in your terminal. Now type bash hello.sh and it should print again in your terminal hello world. If you succeed with this, congratulations. You just did your very first, very own script in Shell. All right, after that, you will see that there is a lot of commands. We will go over different commands that the, that the Shell uh, interface provides like echo, ls, pwd, wget, we will go over them uh, as we need to. So let's go to the page of the carpentries. Now I will stop sharing this one and start sharing the desktop. All right. So I put this away. Now, remember, you have the Unix shell here that I send you. You have your setup. We're going to use these data here. You can download it and please put it in your desktop. If you didn't, don't worry about it. Okay, so the Unix shell. I already prepared some things for you. I already introduced shell. So we can skip that and we can go to navigating directories and files. So pretty much all of you have a notion about what is a directory file, right? Because everybody has this notion of using your documents, creating something with Word or something, and then store them into folders or creating folders around it. And then you have to go in the navigation system on the Windows, uh, whatever is your uh, preferred uh, operate, operation system, and it deploys new windows according to that. So you basically know about this kind of hierarchy that if you go over different folders, you have an organization. And in Linux, for example, in the shell, it allows you to go all the way to the top in something that is called the root directory. Now, the root directory is uh, where everything sits. But for example, it raises a question, well, where am I? So when you start a terminal, you can uh, type print my working directory. And it should tell you where you are. So in this case, I am in users, barra de D, which is my user. To know my user, I can just type who am I. If I had an identity crisis now, I know who I am inside of the system. And as you can see, I am in here in users. And now I could be Larry, I could be Hemotep, or I could be Nell. But in this case, I am myself. So that's fine. And usually in your window, you know, uh, you know how to see things. You just they you can see them. How do we do that here? Well, you type a less and it will deploy where you, what you have there. Here in my user, you can see I have different things, but wait, it just telling me, it, it is just telling me like, mm, you have stuff here. What can I do? Well, I can modify the behavior of many commands just by using something like this. And now you see that there is a slash that appears. This slash, is something that on the right side is for Unix and Windows has to the other side, the slash. But at the end, this slash, what represents is the root system. And then all the hierarchy in the system, like it starts in root, then it goes to Beam, then it goes, or it goes to users. And in my case, it goes from Beam it goes from the root to the users to my folder. And in my folder, I have this. 
But then if I want to say something a little bit more intuitive, I can add another thing that will modify the behavior of that thing. This command is list, by the way. So it lists everything that is inside of this folder. And now I have colored it in a way that the blue ones that I have here are actually folders. And this one here are plain files. Excellent. So now we can go to the desktop, do the same thing. All right. And now you can see I have here different things. I already have the shell lesson data here, but just to let you know, you can do the following. I will copy something from downloads and it's the shell lesson.zip here. Now, if I do again, ls minus fg, I can see it's there and just to unzip it, and see. So, there you go. I can replace everything. Why not? Put A to all. And we have this here. Okay, I have many things here. What can I do? I can do a clear. All right. So far, so good. Now, what I just told you is about something very important, which is down here, all the way down into the page, we have something very important for you. The thing is, Linux has its own manuals and it should be inside of your computer. So one thing always you can try is ls dash dash help. And if you, if you are in a Linux machine, it will deploy a menu because I am in a Mac machine with Mac OS that doesn't exist and it's complaining. It's like, dude, I don't recognize this thing. What is that? Hmm, okay, that's a problem. Well, fret not, there is another way as always. So you can type man for manual, ls. And then in this part, you start seeing the name of the command. And from there down all the description with all the different options you have. Like for example, minus C, minus, here is minus F, here is minus G that I already show you and so on and so forth. One of my favorites is actually minus H, not capital H, this one here. Why? Because you can read here next to it, the explanation. It actually makes it human readable. Okay, let's try it out. Try it right now. LS minus two. Ah, if you were into the man command, just press Q and you should get out of it. Okay, don't get stuck there. Now try ls minus l and see if that works at the beginning. Nothing, right? Now, the, the trick here is that you have to use it combined with another flag. That flag is minus l. Minus l alter the output in this way. Now you see here, a very detailed list of what is going on with your, with your files. Momentarily, we're not going to discuss what is this column with DRWX, because those are permissions, that's another part, more advanced. But what I can tell you is that you can see your user. You can see the group you belong to in this cows. In this moment, I belong to cows. And then, you can see from this side numbers and these other side numbers. If this is a folder, like this one, you have a number of files here. And then in this size is actually the size of your, the actual size of your files. So if you do LSH, 
it converts the output into kilobytes and bytes. So this is how you have a notion of how much is my file there. It could be a gigabyte, a terabyte, a kilobyte, or just bytes, okay? And you can make it prettier, right? Because you can combine it with FG, and then you have a colorful one. And also you can identify easily who are the folders, okay? Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Let's go over this part here. Okay. So, whoop. All right. So, for example, if I do bring working directory, I am in users. If I want to go up or down, how do I go up or down inside of the system, right? First of all, I could go, for example, down. I want to change directory, which is CD. That's what it means. It's very intuitive. And I want to go to desktop. Now, if you see that I am typing super fast because it just seems that my work appears, it's because the terminal or the Linux is able to autocomplete words. So for example, if I go here and I press two times tab, it will deploy which options I have that start with capital D, okay? So it's not that you are writing super fast, but it's because it knows. It has there an implementation that allows you to go faster, okay? So for example, if I put just the O, it will just search for things that starts with DO. Now, if I want to go to desktop, there is only one DE, press tab in autocompletes. If I combine that with C CD, now I am the desktop. Bring working directory. I can see that I'm users, my user, desktop. In, as a matter of fact, if I have a uh, identity crisis, I can actually type, who am I? Uh, who am I? Okay. That's only because if you want to know how your computer recognizes it, recognize you, this is your user. But framework working directory basically gives you all the path. All right. Now, if I want to go back, I can do the following, td dot dot framework and directory, and I am back. Okay, you can go all the way back to the root. Here I am in the root directory, just like in this diagram here, I am here right now. So if I do ls, I see something completely different. If I do ls, fg, I can see that there are different types of files. You will find inside of this lesson here, what does this add means? Because it has a meaning, okay? Fred not, it's not an exam. I'm not going to ask you what it does mean. But so you let, so I have to let you know there are different type of files. There are other type of arc, uh, files that you can exploit or execute, okay? All right, so I was there. Now I want to go, go back. How can I go back? There are different ways. There are different uh, shortcuts. The shortcuts, you will find them also here in the lesson. Let's go all the way down. So you have that dot, print work directory, do, 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 do. here, shortcuts, okay? So there are different shortcuts. You can say, if I want to go back to my home, you can just say, okay, give me CD, print working directory, and back to my home, okay? CD minus will take me back to the root, you see? There is a difference. CD minus takes me where I was previously. CD just takes me to my home. 
very, very quick. Another way to go back home using this tilde here. This character basically is the same as home. In the directory, I am home. I am back to where. I, okay, I want to go back to the root because some reason, cd minus. Also, can I do this, boom, slash, where will it take me? Let's find out. I'm still in root. Okay, if you do cd slash, it will assume that you want to go to the root. So you can end up in weird places in your machine, but you can always type cd and it will take you back home. That's a nice allegory, but yeah. Okay, so if I want to go to desktop, where I, I have these things here. Uh, if, so I have these four different uh, folders, and then I have the shell data here. Uh, it's very intuitive because you can also untar or unzip stuff from the, from the command line. So if you type on zip and then shell, it just responds with a lot of stuff here, okay? And if you do this again, I have now a folder that's called shell lesson data. And I have a file, which is a zip file that I downloaded. It's very easy, unzip the file. Now I have a bunch of things already in my, in my terminal. How do I get rid of it? Because you know I'm tidy, I don't like these many messages that I actually don't need to read. Well, you can clear your terminal. Pretty straightforward. Now from this lesson, what I want you to get is that you can access all this information. And from then on, it's up to you to do exercises or to start using the, the terminal, okay? So for now, please untip your shell data file that you already download and put it in your desktop, however you can. Okay, do you have it already? Who has it already? One, two, three, okay. You need this one, shell lesson data, okay? Remember, you download it from this page set up here. Okay. Now. Hmm? On zip. On zip and the file. I'm looking at my terminal. So it's working fine so far, but instead of the uh, sign, dollar sign, the prompt, like a percentage sign. Yeah. So it's, it's just like a, the Windows think about the slash. It's a matter of choice. Oh. It's about the developer. There are different flavors of Linux, for example. Mm -hmm. There is Ubuntu, there is Manjaro, there is OpenSUSE, which are different ways to do the same Linux but then somebody just wants a percentage. You can change it to prompt to the dollar sign if you want. Okay. But usually you, it's irrelevant. Okay. <laughs> it should, yes. Okay, let me demonstrate again. Let's see. Oh. Oops. It doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, it should with unzip. Ah, another thing very useful. The terminal remember has a history file. The terminal will remember what you did before. So if you just type up arrow, it will start to deploying 
what you already did, okay? All the way here. Now, there's another command that is very useful for these kind of cases, which is history. So if you type history, you can see I have like 3000 different commands, but you should have like about 10 if you are starting your, your terminal. And you can go all the way down, all the way up, sorry, for all the things that you tried, other things that you fail at, and you can remember them, okay? The shell? This one? Yeah. Is it in the, did you went to the internet, to the SW? You couldn't download it. No, I have access to that. I don't know where it is. Is it in your? Ah, OK. So do you remember the, do you have the email that we sent? I didn't. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yep. Yeah, yep. All right, everybody has their folder with the shell data. Okay, nice. She will work it out. Don't worry. So we can go into that. First of all, let's see what is inside. Okay. We have two things, two folders actually. And then we have exercise and North Pacific gyre. One of the things that you can also see with LS if you add an A, you will try to find, you will we'll see, as a matter of fact, these hidden, let's say, hidden files, which are actually something that belongs to the folder itself, because this is telling you like, you can do CD here or you can do CD here. Now the dot, only one dot means here. If you do CD here, you just didn't move, okay? You are in the same place. If you see the that dash, it moves you above, okay? Shell, okay. This is how you go over different kind of uh, folders over your system. Also, it's very useful for the following, for the following thing that we're going to do. Once you are there, you can go all the way to exercise data. And then we can do something that is very, very useful. But it is here. So LS has another kind of things. There are, for example, that can give you the size or the block size. That depends on the operating system, but you can use S. So LS minus S, it gives you some kind of count. You see? It's a different way of organizing things. Sometimes you just want to meet or to see what is inside and how big it, something is but it's also capital sensitive. So you can use minus LS capital. And as you can see, there is no number before, but also it changed the arrangement. Now, this is because it's arranged by the, by the size here. This is what minus S is like, do you want to know who is the most 
biggest, the biggest of the files, then you use capital S. So if you want to see, for example, this is a very big thing. What it is, is it, oh, okay. It's a folder, nice. What is inside of that folder? Can I, I can do this or I can do, again, minus L, but minus L won't tell me much about the order, much about the, much about the, the size. You can call like this, and then it's ordered by the size, but in reverse order. You see, descending, Incre increasing actually. So there are many ways you can play with this. It depends on what you're going to do. All right. So this is all that we need to do for this uh, part of the lesson. The next one is working with directories. So in this part is going to be a little bit more tricky because you are going to create stuff, all right? How do you usually create something in your computer? You go to work, you open a file, you write something, then you save it, right? You open, for example, your window, you create another folder and that's it. That's usually with the windows, right? It's very easy. Now, how do you do kind of the same using the terminal? Also very intuitive. There is one command called mkdir, which stands for make a directory, right? So I can name my directory, I don't know, 10, because I'm going to destroy it later, or it's going to just be a garbage part. So it creates a temp. You can see it here. It's a new directory that I just created now at this time. Nice. LS minus LTR is something that I personally like to do because it's, it's always so showing you like who is the last thing that you created, right? It will depend on you at the end. So, okay, you created one. How do you kill it? There is another thing that is called remove, but it is just RM, okay? The thing here, is that remove distinguishes between files and folders. So files, for example, it can remove very easily. Or, but if I want to remove them, which is a folder, it's going to complain like, dude, this is not a file. Okay. So to remove these kind of files, you have to tell it, okay, remove with R. And I'm going to give you a couple of Seconds, go over the man of remove and tell me what is main minus R. So how do you access the, all the different, uh, the manuals? Recursive is here from number man, RM. Okay, you go down and you should find minus R, which is equivalent to minus R capital. And then it has an explanation of why it has to be done. The remove minus R allows you to remove things in the actual system, in the hierarchy of the system, okay? So you just push Q and you're out. So to remove a folder, minus R, yeah. and now it's gone, okay? That's about it. You can create as many folders as you want, and you can remove them from any point of the hierarchy. For example, let's call mkdir, and let's put temp, temp1, and temp2. These will create the parent directory temp, Inside of that parent directory temp is going to create temp one, and inside of temp one, it's going to create temp two. Okay, a stream of directories. You see? Here is the explanation. You start with temp, then it creates temp one, and then it creates temp two inside temp one. You want to get rid of them, 
Rm minus R. And all of them are gone. If you do LS, temp, it's not there anymore. Now, a very, very heartfelt warning. If you remove something with remove, it's gone. Okay? It's a definitely dead. It's going to be like super high level computer science to retrieve these kind of things. So if you remove something, it's gone. It doesn't show error. Okay. Try the following MKD minus P, like that. Uh, the, same, the same thing. Does it show the error again? Excellent. Because, for example, temp and one. I can create this like this, okay? And then I can do this. And you see no error here. <clears throat> if I try without the minus P, it's going to complain like he said. Why? Because MKD is trying to just create one stream of folders. And then when you try to make again folders in the same stream, He's just finding that he already created those and he's complaining. And he's like, I cannot create more for you. They're already there and they're in my way. And this is the kind of error that you get. So to avoid that, you call the minus P flag, which is like parent. If you find it there, don't bother, just go forward to the next level. And if you do, let's say in this case, LS, there's LTR, them. I will find temp one and temp two at the same level. It's not that anymore inside of the other, it's next to it. Okay. Now we have that. And let's have some fun with the, the data we have here. Now enter exercise writing. Writing. Okay. We should have there this output. Am I right? Haiku TXT and Little Woman TXT. All right. Okay, fine. I am curious to see what is inside, I don't know, Haiku. How can I deploy this inside in the, in the terminal? There are several ways. What I prefer is something that is called cat for concatenation. And it will say, okay, cat Haiku. Done. Oh, okay. I can see inside. This is it. Is looks like a haiku. There is text inside. Now beware. If you do cat haiku little woman, it will put the two things together in the terminal. So it could get messy, but it's very very powerful when you have two things that you want to put together and they're in the same format. It just put them one on top of the other, depending on the <clears throat> depending on the order that you put. Okay. Right now, according to the exercise here, we have to make a directory called thesis, and then we have to create these things here also. So, can you do that for me? Create projects data, project results, just like here, and the thesis directory. Super fast. Yeah, try it from inside writing. Okay. All right, tricky question. Is project and data inside writing? No, right? Because you are using dot dot, which is like one level up. 
create these things. And then you have thesis there, and thesis can be pretty much empty. Now, use this command, minus F capital R cap, R capital dot dot project. That's a very good one when you don't have that many folders with that many super a lot uh, files, because it should deploy something like this. It will tell you the the parent the fold the parent folder project has two folders, and inside of those there is this kind of data. So if you have like a thousand different files inside of those folders, it's going to be like a big chunk. Okay. But still, it's nice to see what is inside. Sometimes you just want to get rid of those folders that have nothing and just get it in your way. Okay. Ah, of course. Naming rules. So for times, for a lot of time when I was using Windows, I like to name my files with a space between them, right? Like final thesis 21, 21, 22, right? And with a space because it looks nice and I understand that. But usually Linux complains about it. You have to literally tell them like, here's a space and you have to escape that character. So the normal convention is to use dashes, uses, using points, any kind of underscores, because then it's easy for Linux to say, okay, if you tap DO and there is the documents, I can just go over documents underscore one very quickly, all right? This is something that could be interesting for you because it's a change in the way you save things, or it could be very easy for you because you hate naming things too much differently, right? Maybe you have that experience with final work I don't know, June 22, and then final work, June 22, version one, final work, 22, version 100. So these kind of things can actually help. All right, let's create something different. In this case, let's create a draft text. Now, in the setup, if you recall correctly, there was advice, like you can come with a text editor. For Windows, it could be Notepad, for Linux, it could be Nano, and it could be BIM, BIM. I personally prefer BIM, but it has its quirks. So for example, in this case, if we use Nano, Nano, let's say hello, dot list. Okay, you're inside Nano and you can create like, hello. Wonderful people, okay? To save things in Nano, you press Control O to write it. It will tell you, hey, do you want to write this thing in this uh, file, hello list? Yeah. So you just press Enter and it's safe. And then Control X to exit. Wait, sorry, how did you went from writing and then mm -hmm. Good question. What you see here in the menu, this one is control, okay? Control write out is how you write things. Okay. And then it will prompt you to this menu here. And you don't have to do anything but press, press enter. So just control or? Control O. Oh. Control X. Control X is for exit. Control O. Control O for writing stuff. And then control exit, control X for exit. Okay. Now I want to show you what's BI because this is a practical joke. If you just type BI, don't do it. You enter this kind of interface. So this kind of interface is a nightmare because there is no menu, you see? So you have to know where to find those menus and that's not covered in this lesson. Okay. Anyway, end of the story. So you have hello list. Question, can Word open hello list? 
in Windows? Could it be open by no? Could be, right? Who knows? The thing is here, Nano can open all these kind of things. If you want to create another thing like called Nano, hello dot dwt you can say hello jack save it and these kind of things can be concatenated here because unix linux and bash they can have anything throw at them And at the end, you can read it from inside. You can see what's inside. So you can see, and you can edit a lot of different kind of type of files. I have a friend that likes to do all their files dot list. I have a friend that likes to do everything txt. I have a friend that likes to come up with their, his own extensions. And this is not a problem for nano, not a problem for BI, for other things, maybe, okay? So, if you don't remember the, the, the commands for nano, here they are. Control X for exit, okay? Control O for writing things up, all right? So, there is another thing that is pretty much demonstrative, which is touch. If you do touch this, let's do this, let's do this exercise, do touch my file txt and then tell me what you see with ls minus l so okay coach my file dot txt hmm all right so i have here my file i have hello to it and hello list, okay? So hello list is slightly more heavier than hello tweet, which is only 12 bytes, but Touch just created something and left, left it empty. In, that, in this case, well, it just created something, but that doesn't imply that you cannot go inside and change it. To modify the title, like the name of the file? Yeah. Okay. To modify the name of the file, that's a good one. How do you rename something? Let's say that you want to rename my file to my text. So in that case, you go out of, out back to the terminal, my file, my text. Yes. Move will allow you to rename stuff. It's easier that way. In Nano, it should allow you to go like about the, the title after Control X, but you can see here, it changed my file to my text more easily. When you want to just rename things, move is your choice. If you want to save something in Nano, My text. Ah. Oh. My other text. Here is your, here in this window, did you get the, the problem? Yeah. Dot txt. And then enter. I wrote one line. So we, we have to check your computer. What's up? The lower, oh, okay, is with, with, you mean when I exit like that? Control X, Control X. Renaming it Nano, okay. Nano will not rename it, it will create another one. 
You see? My text, you have. Hmm. Yeah, no. Yeah. If you see here and you type control O, you can you can name your file there. After control O, it will just show you this menu here. And then you just type, I don't know, my text to txt. Enter, and if you go again, you have again, it just is going to create more and more copies of the thing, okay? Now, maybe I don't want a copy, I just remove it, my other text. And as a matter of fact, here is a very important concept that you're going to learn, wildcards. If I put double tap at the end, it show me, I you have to my other text, right? So I either type the complete name to remove that one file. But if I want to remove two of them at the same moment, I can use wildcards. That's going to come handy. But okay, for now, let's just remove one by one. The other text dot txt, oh, yes. You can place two of them or as many as you want, and then it will just kill them. All right. So we have seen moving the directories, moving the files all over the place. To move things is with move, MB. MB allows you to rename and to move stuff around, okay? For example, we can move, oh, Move pieces. Okay, move writing one level up. And then I don't see it here. I see it outside. Now it's here next to North Pacific and outside that. Or I can move it back from the level up, move writing back here. Dot is what says, like, move it here, not anywhere else. Or you could move it also to proteins folder if you want. Anywhere you want goes after what you want to move. And it's, no, it's the same for files, it's the same for folders. All right, good enough. Oh, da, 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 da. Yep, this is just exactly that, renaming files. So imagine you have a file that is badly named. You have a problems with that name. Which one of the following is going to change the file to the name you want? What do you think? Is one a viable option? Is two a viable option? Is three a viable option? Four? What do you think? So the stars, let's say, copy statistics here is not renaming anything. It's just going in a loop itself, right? Moving the statistics here is not doing what we want. It's not re renaming anything. So move this file to this new file name. Okay, sounds plausible. That's what I wanted to do. Copy this file into another file, well renamed, it's possible. So the solution, of course, it's going to be two because it's moving, you're renaming the thing. Copy is just going to generate another file with another name. It's not renaming your file. But anyway, it depends on your flavor. You can copy one thing and then remove the other. Okay. That's about it. So it will not replace it. It will just create two files with exactly the same name. It will create another file with the name you want because this has a very slightly difference here. It's not renaming it by itself, 
but for example, you can copy this one into another one and then remove this one. Same process, but two steps. And then you have this process here is one step. But it, it will be the same name to do file with an error? Like, like yeah. a, a file already with the same name? Yeah. It will complain. It will tell you, are you trying to copy the same file? Oh. Because they is case sensitive. All right. So we went over different things already. Aha. This is what I wanted to reach for the wildcards. The wildcards are very, very, very important and very, very useful. Go to the protein folder. Okay. Now we're going to play here like this one. So if you had basic organic chemistry, you know that cubane, ethane, methane, octane, pentane, propane sounds like chemicals, right? Now, if you want just to select, let's say, if you have something like another file here, touch my file. Whenever you do ls minus ltr, my file is going to be there. What if you want only those that end up with PDB? If you just want them to be in your list, then you use wildcards. And in this case, it's asterisk.pdb. Asterisk means all characters that are before .pdb. Anything that is before, numbers, whatever, okay? And then it goes back this. You see? Only those that has PDB at the end. Now, this is another one that I like because it's very, very, very specific, which is the question mark. If you see here, you can combine question marks as, as three question marks, for example. Let's do that. LS, three question marks, dot. And three question mark, and dot. And make it a list. So what happened there? Very easy to explain. These two question marks match one and only one character. So you're telling list, search for these files with three letters, whatever there are, then aim.pdb and return them as the list. Okay. So this is pretty straightforward. Asterisk is used a lot. When you have something like thousands of files, ls.pdb or .ext, it will deploy all the different files that you have with that termination or even before that. Like p asterisk is going to give you those that have any initial p and then whatever comes after, okay? It's pretty straightforward. However, you can come with these kind of questions. Like if you are there and then you have to tell which command will give you the result that you want, okay? If you just want to retrieve methane and ethane, which one of these four is going to be the viable option? Like you have to combine Asterisks and question marks. Could it be, is it possible to retrieve only ethane and methane using LS? So my beta is in two. Number two, I think is the right one. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. I think three is the right one, yeah. Because he's telling whatever is before T then match two different characters, whatever they are, in and then dot .pdb. Let's see, the masters of carpentry says, yeah, solution is three, well done. <laughs> so you have here all the explanation there, why the others are not, okay? Some will tell you like, okay, this only shows one file. 
so on and so forth. You will get used to this if you want to go and check stuff like AWS and you have thousands of files of big data or a lot of different files, not even just big data. You will have to sort them. You have to put them in different folders and these will come handy. All right. This is another example. Like, oh, this is too short to show. Okay, in this exercise, for example, you have one of your friends that is going away for vacations and he wants different uh, files in different folders. This is your initial folder. And then you have to get these files into these folders. Okay, and then another, another files are going to send to Bob because Bob is going away and he needs all the databases or all the environment files. Yeah, I know. So to select only the November files, how would you go about? If you have all these files here, which are only November, the last four. So which wildcard should we use to just select those guys with LS? Yeah, star, A star, and then 2015, not even that, just 11, 23, and then star the other thing. And you can move them with those stars too. You just switch from LS to move and you pass them to Bob and then you are free for the weekend. Okay. So this is about pretty much all the things that we have here. The most important part that you have to check out after this is the wildcards. The wildcards will help you to literally do thousands of things before you know it. Okay. Pipes and filters. This is actually fun. A little bit. Yeah. So with pipes and filters, what is a pipe? Or well, in the English, a pipe is basically a tooth, right? But for us, in Unix, a pipe represents the connection between two different, two different uh, commands. Like for example, ls minus l. This symbol here, this thing here, this is just a line, is the pipe. And then you can call another, in the, another command like sort. Now, this is going to be better explained in this bar here. Here, I love it. Let's put this a little bit. So what you have been using so far is one command and its output into the, into the shell. The very first thing you did was actually redirect the output into your bash script already, which is the second step, and it creates a file, right? But you can put a series of different commands together using pipes like this one. So that only says like, the out of this command, pass it through this command now, process it, and then pass it into this command, and then put it into output shell, or, just redirect it like here into a new file, okay? So for this one, we are already in the, we are already in the folder of proteins. In the folder of proteins, we can do this work count. So work count asterisk.pdb will give you this output. This output, its meaning is number of lines, number of characters, and if I recall, number of total characters. Number of lines is the most important one because it tells you how long is your file usually. You can also modify or count just lines dot pdb. Now, work count doesn't sort anything, right? As you can see, it has first 20, then 12, then nine, then 30, blah, blah. So you, if you don't want that, there is already a command for that. You just pass 
the output of work of work end with a pipe into sort. Okay. Easy peasy. Now there is a catch. Sort is very sensitive too. You can tell him like, hey, sort it as a numeric value or not. And that is also how it's coming the minus n. Now, you can, in fact, redirect all this to my lens dot txt. And now you have the result here. And then you can store it and then replace it. Like for example, maybe I don't want how Cuban looks. So what you see here is another command that is called set. Set is very powerful as much as it's uh, a little bit dangerous if you don't know how to use it. But set allows you to just find a word in a, in a file and change it for another word with this kind of uh, syntaxes here. You just substitute whatever you find cubane for hexane. In this case here, we have cubane with 20. Now it's called hexane, okay? This kind of things is super useful when you have to go over thousands of thousands of different lines and you have to change two or three letters. If you're interested in what set can do, go to the manual and find examples because you will find crazy examples of what set can do for you, okay? Now, after that, let's use something like head or tail. Say that you want the very first thing in the list. So we have head, my length. Now, head is a command that you can specify how many lines do you want. So you do the head minus n, one, it will give you this, the very first one. If you have an unordered file, it's going to be very, very uh, sort. And then head minus n one. Okay. You can also use tail. And you get the last one. So the combination of different commands is possible using pipes, which is fine. Now let's go back to the thing here. We've been using these multiple commands using work count and sort. Sort is a very, is a very good uh, example of how to use one command after another. So why do you need the n to the minus n one? Okay, this is exactly what I was going to point. Why don't we go to shell animal counts? Switch to that folder now. Actually, I just need to be that dot. Okay. So if we see what's see in here, you can try to store it like this. It doesn't change a lot. The thing is, you need to specify like 
what do you want to do with sort? And sort minus n is numeric. But the, the real problem here is that you have uh, commas between them, right? So there is another one of these powerful uh, bash commands is cut. So with cut, you have to tell them, hey, this is the delimiter minus D. I usually use two quotations the, and comma. This is the delimiter. Then I want field number two from animals. And it should give you back just this thing in the middle, right? Now you can just sort it, boom, and so on and so forth. You don't, you don't need n for this one because it's a string of letters. And then unique. So there are a lot of different commands, okay? There's a plethora of them. This material here, you can check it out whenever you want. You can go over it very, very slowly, different to what I'm doing here because we have only two hours to pack, all right? Now, for now, let's have a break, all right? 10 minutes break for everyone. All right. Usually I copy and, copy and paste, but if you want to use the same command again, and it's the last one that you use, you can use exclamation and the command. For example, I use the last thing I use with TP was this one. So exclamation ls, it just reproduces the same ls in wherever you are. So that's, a, that's one of the ways of working faster. If that's the last one and you want to reuse it, exclamation before the command. Mm. I think you sh you should copy paste that one. Oh, the last one you used was CD. The last time that you use CD is not going to over the last thing that you use is the last time you use CD. So if you were going to change to directory to somewhere and you're not there or it's not clear where where the path is is not going to is going to complain
Okay. All right, guys. Ready for the last right? Okay, so the next two parts is looping and shell scripts, right? So we can combine two of them and try to do a script. My first script. So, search. so every shell script should always start with a shebang. Yeah, da -da 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 -da. that's the shebang. Basically, whatever you call this symbol, and then exclamation point. Then bin slash bash. So don't forget this one from the root called bash. Excellent. So here you can put whatever command that you have seen so far into place. Let's put echo hashtag, yes. <laughs> but together it's called shebang. Have a nice day. Deep. So you save it and then you do bash, my first sh, and it prints have a nice day, right? Okay. But what if I want having a nice day 10 times? So we go back and then we do something that is called loop, right? The loops, the most secure loop that I know is a for loop. There's another kind of loop, which is a while loop, but I don't like that one because it could get infinite. The for loop has an end, a start and an end. And in this case, you can do for num in one, two, three, four. Then for bash, it's important to put some limits like this thing here, the semicolon. It will tell like, okay, this is the first part of your order. Then do what I want to do. Echo, have a nice day. Nice day, okay. And then because I'm done, I just write done. Don't forget to put here, semicolon, okay? Semicolons will indicate the for loop and shell, like here is one part, here is the other part, here is the next part. And once you're done, write done, okay? So we do the same, bash, have a nice day. I need to roll it four times, okay? Now, what if I want to change? This part here. What if I want this not to be just me? If I want to say, have a nice day, you. Then you tell Bash by telling him dollar sign one. And it will be the same here, dollar sign one. And let's say I want to print the number, dollar sign, num, okay? This is called variables from the input. In this case, one is going to be bash, I don't know, u. You see? What I did there is to input whatever I want to call that sign, uh, dollar sign one. This is assigning variables, right? While one, two, three, four is an inside variable that I cannot modify because it's inside the script. 
right? Excellent. So let's say that I want to modify it and I want to, I don't know, do more than one. Let's say two. Okay. And I can have a nice day one for somebody and four for anybody else. So in this case, me, okay, you and me. You see? Now me is getting assigned to the second variable and you is getting assigned to the first variable. Inside this thing, I have the second variable here, the first variable and the variable number, which is a tie to this for loop, okay? Now let's do something crazy. Let's try and do, I don't know, 100. How would you go about writing 100 in these kind of things? Would you want one, two, three, four, five? No, that's not the way. And you were suspicious of that, I guess. But then you can call different methods here. One of those is using curly brackets and say one dot dot a sequence until, okay, a little bit more. So boom, one, to 20, you see? What's another way to do this? Well, there is another way to do this, of course. We can go, copy that, let me copy this. And we go over here. Now, one thing for that you have to know is that Unix is very sensitive to whatever quotation you use. You have seen that there is simple quotations, double quotations. There is one that is like slightly tilted quotation. Okay. So for that one, we can use another one that is sec one to 10, if I recall correctly. This sec command, actually, we can check it out. A sequence of numbers. Okay. Hopefully it's the same as before. And there you have it. You have 20 me's and then 10 you. So have a good day you, all right? This is basically assigning variables inside a shell script. Very easy. And inside that loop, you just need to change whatever you want to do. In this case, I wanted to go and just print something, right? In this case, have a nice day. But I can also go and just say, okay, I want to modify something using move. And I want it to be, mm, let's say, folder something. And in this case, when you try to do this, you better use the curly brackets because that will protect your variable from being modified from the underscore. The thing is, this is our dry run because I'm not executing move. I'm just printing what I want, right? Oh. Move you to folder one, to folder blah, 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 okay? That's one of the tricks. And that's, uh, this thing also could be lead you to something that's called slicing. Now, why is this important? For example, if we go again to proteins, exercise, proteins, okay? If we see, for example, methane, we have one thing that is called add-on, or I just need the compound name. Okay. So if I go to my bash script, I do a shebang. Then tell him from the root, remember to pull bash. Now, 
for all the elements here. Let's call them M in and then tilt the thing ls dot pdb. This tilted, uh, this tilted uh, quotation will automatically trigger that command, all right? So I tell him, okay, this is where is the first part of the, this is the first part of the order. Do the following. I want you to tell me the head. What's the first line of that thing inside of the list that I call M? Is variable m. And now do done. Sorry. So also check out for the indentation. Indentation is this space between what is inside of the four, inside of the four, right? It's clearer, is neater, is better. Everybody can read it. So do. if we do bash. Oh, bash. My first sage. Okay. Then I have compound, methane, compound, methane, blah, blah, blah. All right. There is another command that I could use to get the same result, which is called grep. If I tell grep compound from all the PDBs, I get something slightly different, but still the same result, right? This is just searching inside different folder, different files. Instead of going one by one, it's just retrieving one thing out of the folder, a very specific one. Grep has many, many other options. Like for example, grep, versus, grep, grep minus B. It will retrieve anything but compound. And it does, it goes over the different files and you see no compound. So there are two ways to do the same thing and you can see the results can be different, okay? All right, back into the, back into the idea of going, where is it? One up, the North Pacific stuff, okay. Here in the North Pacific, we have different files. As a matter of fact, we have many files. What we can do first is go work count all the .txt to see the lines. And you can see pretty much everybody has 300 except this guy, which we don't know why that's an anomaly inside of, the, inside of this, right? So for example, you can go about and do this. We can copy from, da, 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 or we can just do it again. Dot sh. This is VI, by the way. Shebang, beam bash. So this not this let the system know that this is a bash thing, right? We start for m in dot ls, all the dot txt here. Do, let's do the first thing. Yeah. Let's switch it up to tail. And I want the very last one. So the very last one is minus n1 of that thing that I just call m, that variable inside of that list. And it's done. Very simple script, right? But it's going to run super fast. Time. Bash. First stage. Time is another of those uh, very handy commands. If you want to know how fast the thing is running, you can see here the time is running. It's taking less than one second, okay? But here is the last line of each of these different uh, files. Okay. As a matter of fact, we can do something even better. Let's say, okay, 
Give me this. But also echo this. Now, here's the problem. If I do this, it's going just to put things one in top of another. Bash, my first stage. You see, here's the name, here's some thingy. But this is on order. So how can I do that inside of the for loop again, right? If I want to have a nice layout of name and name and last, na last line, this is something that we can do by assigning tail to a new variable, all right? So this kind of new variable, we can call it, I don't know, n. It's going to be equal to a variable, and then you have to protect that, by, that content, okay? This is a way you can assign a new variable inside of the loop, also outside, and it will be contained in that thing that now you call n. So now you can put it here, n. You can see how the color changes just because this is a new thing. This is a new variable. And then bash. And we have a nice layout. We can go even further than that, right? We can say, okay, I just want more space between these things. So let's use this thing here, this thing here. Quotations. And let's put one, two, three, four, five space. More space, just because I want more space. Nice. Do you want a CSV file? No, the problem. Now that I have echo in place, I could just put a comma here, get it over here, save it, and execute it. And now it's a CSV file. Do I want it in a other kind of file? I just redirect it and it's going to be my result. Dot. CSV. You can go over here and my result CSV. Yep, that's correct. That's a problem, right? So to escape that problem, you literally have to use the slash, the escape, and it should be fine after that. But I don't think it's going to be fine. No, it's, it should be like here. But this just, ah, okay. This is just my result. This was not created. Anyway, so. Yeah, it's a space. The space didn't really create something. Okay, so result. Dot CSV. We move it. Now we have one. We can do this. Nice. Okay, next trick. What if I want to do two for loops inside? But now what I need is a head. Let's call this copy. My second dot is H. All right. Let's do head here. So you can run this one. The same as the other one. Now, the first one is already into this file, right? 
one. So if I want to just append whatever happens in the second, I just tell him append. Append literally is just putting another bigger than sign next to this one. And it should show now double of this thing. Ah. Wait. Okay. So appending things is also very useful when you have to just input things from different kind, right? Now, in the last 10 minutes, why don't you try to do your own very first second program of shell? For example, try to go inside of North Pacific and get something out of it. Or I will put here the first, my first. And remember, start with a shabank, ping bash, and then do something here inside of this. You can try to search for a pattern, change something, or move something. You can rename all the files to one, two, three, four, or you can just erase them one by one. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. This one is the echo. Okay. Check. First check. Do you have these the semicolons in place? Yeah. Semicolons are the worst nightmare of any programmer. That's correct. Okay. So you're here in the North Pacific Gyre, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have all these files here too. Yes. Okay. Did you try tail any of these guys? Minus N, I know. That one worked, right? So, it's funny because it it doesn't deploy the same kind of thing, right? You need to use the quotations here. You need once you have echo, you can put whatever you want here in in the middle. Now you can put X amount of spaces. Oh, yeah, that's what I get. Uh, ah, this output. Yeah. Okay. So there you did basically this one. The yeah, it's in the script now. So it's minus tail, tail minus n1, and then the variable m that you have here 
is assigned to the variable n. Okay, and I just want to ask, uh, any kind of change to the variables? If, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it should be your choice. Then it, this part here, it has to be tied up. Like the equal sign has to be next to the dollar sign. No spaces. Okay. All right. And then the parentheses. Uh -huh. Then the command, like this one. Is the same, right? No, not necessarily. No, because the the do is it's itself just there. But let's check. <laughs> yep. It works the same. I'm just doing one thing, right? This one is do. One do, yeah. Set variable. Echo, uh huh. Done. At the same line as four. Hmm, I will check that with you. Okay, everybody having problems? Yeah. Yeah. But the, the thing is not about the system because my mind, whenever I open the, my first class, it does this. And I hear I cannot really do anything. You know, I cannot see the colors of this. You know, it's kind of a lot of windows. You can even use Notebook for this kind of thing in Liquid. It's a very simple thing. You have to save it where you know, and then you see the flash. The important part is the shebang. This thing here. Okay. So uh, I can ask that you can use BI? Did you use nano? Nano. nano? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, nano, my first stage. Mm -hmm. And then you should be able to write down stuff. Mm -hmm. Like here, echo stuff. Yeah. 
with nano, it should let you always work. Mm -hmm. You should be able to write with nano. And the other stuff, it was for the colors. And you write out with control O, you save with enter. Yeah, I'm not sure. 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 Yeah
Okay, let me check here. Control exit. Okay, if you have SH, the new kernel from Apple, the SSH, CSH, you're going to have problems, which is what we saw right now, because it's not exactly the, this kind of bash. But anyway, if you don't, if you have the bash, the normal bash, this should work just as fine. So for those that has SH, you can do the following. Cat. This is the normal one. You can put all these into one line. Paste. Done. And it will work because this script here could be written as one line here. The problem is that here you have problems to read it, right? It's not super straightforward, but this is another way to do loops in the command line, completely directly. I do advise to use better scripts because it's more readable, but if you master this, you need scripts. It just takes a lot of effort. <laughs> Okay, all right, that's basically the end of it. You already passed through all of this hell during two hours. You have the material. If you have any questions, contact me. I will be more than happy to help you, okay? Thank you. Thank you for joining. Great. It's different. Ah, instead of the till, the till that, ah, all right. Well, it, it will go away. That's okay, it will go away. You cannot become programmers without making mistakes, really. All right, guys, have a safe weekend. Zoom people, thank you for attending too. Thank you.